Good afternoon, Nudes 2024. It's been an exciting 24 hours of talks, and I'm thrilled to have you here for a session on how ontology-powered graph racks are transforming drug development research. Since the rise of large language models, users have been drawn to the remarkable ability to answer questions in natural language. While early versions were prone to amusing yet frustrating errors, like confidently sharing fictional information, the potential for specialized LMs in science was transformative. These tailored models promised to process and present complex information efficiently. Yet one major issue persisted, hallucinations. For scientists whose work depends on accuracy, these errors were unacceptable. Despite the hopes that LMs could distill and interpret vast data sets, the risk of false positives eliminated trust in the results. To solve this, a new solution emerged, retrieval augment generation, or RAC. I'm sure everybody here is familiar with RAC, but let's just quickly go over. RAC is a method that combines the strengths of retrieval-based systems with generative models. Essentially, RAG allows us to pull relevant data from a large collection of documents or a database, while also generating responses based on that data. It's like having an AI assistant that can answer questions, not just based on static and knowledge, but by tapping into a vast pool of information, contextualizing responses with real-time data retrieval. While RAG is powerful, when dealing with highly interconnected data sets, more specificity and structure are needed. This is where GraphRAG comes in. Building on RAG, GraphRAG uses graph databases to model complex relationships such as biological pathways or drug target and interactions. Unlike RAG, which retrieves isolated data points, GraphRAG understands their connections. For instance, when studying gene disease interactions, GraphRAG can reveal secondary or tertiary relationships that a standard document search might miss, making it ideal for biopharma use cases when where uncovering hidden, hidden connections is crucial. Now, with the basics of GraphRag in place, there are a few different ways to implement GraphRag, as discussed by Elena Coley in her blog post linked below. Highly recommend reading that. The first method is Cypher templates. Cypher templates use predefined queries written by domain experts, allowing the LLM to map user questions directly to these fixed templates. It's effective when the type of questions are predictable, but limited when queries fall outside these templates. This approach is reliable, but lacks flexibility akin to working with ready-made toys with fixed forms. Dynamic cipher generation involves flex introduces flexibility by using parameterized query snippets that the LLM can assemble based on user input. It can handle a range of similar questions without predefined templates for each one, making it adaptable while still constrained by the available stimulus. Think of it like building with bricks. There's room to customize. The structure is guided. Text to cipher is our final stage. Text to cipher offers the highest flexibility where the LLM translates any user question into a cipher query using the database scheme as a reference. While powerful, this method isn't always reliable, as LLMs could misinterpret questions. This is similar to painting, the freedom to create anything, but a high risk of mistakes. Each method has its trade-offs, so which one is chosen depends on what the desired goal is. Relating this back to drug development, we need to consider how questions are approached in the pharmaceutical space. While there are researchers who are technically, technologically fluent, the expertise of the vast majority of these scientists is in the science itself. This means that information is asked and expected in natural language manner. A typical flow for the retrieval of information looks like the cartoon depiction shown. The domain expert asks their computational expert on the team a scientific question. The computational expert then takes this question and then sets down a series of paths that they'll need to take in order to answer the question. However, this is where we see the first potential issue with using natural language that's faced by computational users as well as graph rag agents alike. The desired interpretation of the question from the senior scientist may differ from what the computational technologist has understood. Rather than, it, that, rather than understand it to mean that an external alliance has tagged the genes as being associated with the metalloblastoma, the computational member may have interpreted as just internal metalloblastoma patients' findings. These kinds of misunderstandings stemming from ambiguity in large language are one of the core components that must be addressed when it comes to building up a graph model, and it starts from describing an ontology. Although the term ontology may seem complex, it's simpler than it appears. If, you use, if you've used Neo4j, you've already engaged with an ontology to some extent. Essentially, an ontology defines concepts, relationships, and data properties within a specific domain. The aim is not just to classify objects, but to establish how they relate to one another. This is especially powerful in pharmaceutical research where relationships can capture meaningful interactions and contextualize conditions between data points, formalizing insights, and aiding complex interpretations. By defining terms like upregulated, downregulated, or significant, researchers can go beyond raw data to reveal relationships such as upregulated in response to treatment X or differentially expressed in disease Y. This makes database more dynamic and actionable, allowing scientists to identify patterns and potential targets more efficiently. Now, for effective target identification, 
It requires integrating diverse biological data types to fully understand disease mechanisms. A comprehensible pharmaceutical database encompasses categories like hypotheses, biological metadata, observations, external public knowledge bases, and team expertise, each offering distinct insights. Standardizing these data types Data types requires using universally unique identifiers to ensure seamless integration across the sources. This allows them to create a unified graph that supports consistent querying and cross-domain analysis. This interconnected structure provides teams, the biologists, chemists, and data scientists, with real-time comprehensive views of the research landscape, allowing them to spot patterns and potential targets more efficiently. With this holistic data framework, teams can collaborate more effectively, accessing insights that accelerate decision-making and support breakthroughs. The result is a cohesive approach to discovery that enhances speed, precision, and overall research effect. Now, building an oncology from scratch can feel overwhelming, but we have a powerful starting point in the drug discovery space, public, bio public biological ontologies. These existing frameworks found, provide a foundational structure we can adapt and extend to fit our needs. Public ontologies are extensive, containing relationships that not only connect different concepts, but also can link a concept to itself. For instance, when an object is a subset of itself. This structure capsule captures the complex nested relationships frequently found in biological data. By layering these ontologies, we build a rich network that enables semantic reasoning, allowing users to explore the data in a meaningful way. This ontological network becomes a navigatable map, revealing connections and insights that would otherwise be difficult to uncover. Once we have this guiding layer from the public consortia, we can now model internal data and enrich it with specialized relationships that reflect the unique focus and objectives of a company's research. In this way, our graph becomes both comprehensible and tailored, integrating public knowledge with proprietary insights to support advanced discovery. This approach allows scientists to walk from distinct nodes, such as relating a variant to an allele, through multiple potential intermediate concepts. With this ontology built, we can now actually use it within our GraphRack system. As an overview, our GraphRack system is very similar to the ones that you find online in every single publication that talks about GraphRack. However, there's one key difference. Rather than feeding the database schema itself, we feed in the formal ontology that we define. And this is to prevent false connections from being created between node labels that would not be biologically sound. Taking an example and seeing how a GraphRack system would break it down will not only help us better see how the specific GraphRack stages work, but will illustrate some of the limitations that we must be aware and overcome in order to use GraphRack systems in such a large scale. The Cypher generator will look across all the individual concepts, relationships, and data properties and try to map out how a substructure can be created that encompasses all the relevant pieces of information in our input query. The task for the LLM not only includes identifying what each of the token poten token's potential concepts are, but also selecting the right relationships for the ontology. The LLM would then determine the desired subgraph and represent the input query as the one shown, taken as a subset of the larger, more detailed ontology we've had before. It would output the cipher that we could then run against the database and retrieve individual data points. From here, the answers are then passed to another LLM stage to make the answers not only feel like conversing with a human, but also enrich the values with the trusted or trained LLM to give more context or background information if desired. Now that we have the whole flow laid out, let's discuss where the limitations of the system are and where additional optimizations are needed. The first challenge comes from the potential of mismatch typing of tokens we find interesting. Depending on the spelling of tokens in a large connecting database, the text may map to different objects. Furthermore, if the wrong casing is used, then a cipher match using exact matching will also fail as the LLM may use what was fed to it. Continuing on this, we need to deal with the fact that a typical knowledge graph can contain tens of millions of nodes, if not more, and so what labels that node is associated with is important to help guide our cipher generator. To address these challenges with pathing errors and incorrect node labels, we can leverage a node index. Using a full text node index allows us to return search results ranked by best match, meaning it can identify relevant objects even when there are minor differences in spelling, capitalization, or terminology. This approach not only improves accuracy by eliminating the need for dynamic text transformations, but also enhances context by allowing us to take the top N hits rather than solely relying on the top result. As opposed to our previous flow, where the LLM would grab the text of the prompt and generate a cipher condition here that would fail, by feeding in objects and their corresponding labels to the cipher generator, small mistakes can be corrected. An added benefit is that the addition of the node labels as well can help guide the construction of the subgraph that the answers that answers the question by providing more focus to the concepts of interest to the cipher generator. Great, right, we solve complexity number one. However, when looking at the domain ontology that we described, we may discover another complexity staring right at us. While constructing a diverse and rich ontological layer to guide the graph model is invaluable and should still be followed, the actual implementation of the same ontology within a graph rack space can lead to more complications than we initially intended. 
While a wide variety of semantically distinct connections in ontology may help biologists understand the underlying connections, the same wide array of options fed into the cipher generator to correctly select the desired relationship can be overkill. To counter this, one approach we can use is to subset the ontology that's fed into the graph rack to model questions and the types of interactive co communication that our user base would want to walk down. This can involve eliminating relationships that scientists would not want to be considered when asking most questions, but still keeping the relationships within the master ontology for more manual navigation in the database. Alternatively, you can further cut down relationships um, by using data properties as well that will still distinguish them upon closer inspection, maintain some of the semantic reasoning of the connection between the concepts. There's no right answer for how to do this. The reduction is often needed, but there are ways to bypass it as well. One of these methods is by using prompt templates. A computational expert would be tasked with creating the corresponding cipher for a wide array of questions that scientists typically want answered. These prompts are then fed into the cipher generator to help it get its bearing when constructing the complex ciphers. Now, a key issue I have not seen spoken about in other talks, primarily because it's a document search, but I do find essential is the idea of database limits being placed. As the cipher generator creates the cipher to be executed against the database, some level of limitations to the number of results should be placed to prevent overloading the Neo4j instances memory or corresponding services using the Neo4j database. This comes at the con that the question's responses will appear to be incomplete as some of the answers are cut off. However, it's a trade-off to having extremely large machines running our cipher queries. Remember, Graphrag's intended function should be for shorter systemic responses. In addition to placing limits on the number of return items from the database to prevent infrastructure issues, we also want limits to prevent running out of tokens when feeding the results to an LLM. As we can see in this example, the LLM summarizer stage will sometimes naturally try and limit even the 100 responses that are returned. It isn't until additional prompting is given that it expands and gives the full list. However, in such a case, it's kind of uncertain when it does and does not provide the whole list without looking at the actual numbers. Thankfully, newer models exist, especially Gemini, where the context space is so large that token limits is becoming less and less of a problem, but still something to be aware of. Now, in subsequent cases, a user may want to go, instead of just a graph rack approach, they would want to go to the actual overall cipher. Now, why would a user want to go to that? Well, simply, it's to have more context associated with their question. We can still make use of the cipher generator and all the other steps we've discussed to generate a tangible cipher. However, rather than execute and turn subsets of the data, you can instead just use the cipher itself in either widgets and dashboard. What this approach allows is the flexibility and power of natural language component of graph rack system without the loss of information as a summary is created. In essence, the user themselves becomes the final LLM agent, discerning the information and arriving at conclusions. And that when, when the, that user is one of the domain experts in the field, this can be even more beneficial than relying on a potential interpretation by an LLM whose training we may not be aware of. In conclusion, the graph model built on ontological principles from public consortia and pharmaceutical companies' hypotheses establishes a valuable network for the research team. This, foundational, this foundation supports the team's connected findings and enables GraphRag model to help researchers ask cross-domain questions and accelerate their own discoveries. Although this agentic retrieval reduces much of the cross-communication, more work is still needed to replace reports, plots, and intensive data processing for some research questions. Until such time comes to fruition, we'll still have to rely on trustworthy computational biologists to get the job done, but there's hope for the future. And with that, thank you. And if there are any questions, I'll take them now.